Temuji. I remember being in Monte Sahaja the last time and I felt like the mind was so far away, like clouds in the distance, and it didn't matter what the clouds were saying. And here I am again in Monte Sahaja, and I'm once again engulfed in my mind, like a leaf blown helplessly to the right and to the left in the wind of thoughts. There's so much self-involvement again, so many judgments of myself, of others, so many feelings of being useless, an outsider. And on top of all this, there is so much frustration that thoughts have once more conquered the land, that they are believed in again. It's as if I've fallen from grace, fallen out of grace's lap. And my question is, why has this happened again? Can this ever stop happening? Can I be freed from my mind once and for all? Awareness is here in all of this, but it seems like it's on the back burner, like something weak in the background, something too elusive. Please, I need your help in seeing clearly. Mm -hmm. Can I read? Mm. Why you come back then? Everything was going good. Why no, you come it's, back? No, it started mm. before. Mm. But it, it was very obvious here. Yeah. Things become very obvious here. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes people will say, but I mean, it's supposed to be a place of peace, you should come, you should feel peaceful. And I feel turmoil. I said, well, it's very good. It's very good. Something is stirred up. Hmm? Like if you have an earthquake at the bottom of the ocean, a lot of bubbles they come to the top. When they reach the top, they disappear. They don't go down. The bubbles don't go down. They're coming up. And perhaps in your life, normally going about, you are not stretched spiritually, inwardly. You come to a place like this, and somehow you feel not grounded or something. But this is good. It's finding out there is something still there that is still functioning inside conditioning. And um, So the satsang only is helping you to burp them out, all this trapped energy, old stale emotions still that come out. I don't see any of this as bad. I remember being here in Montessaja last time. I felt like the mind was far away, like clouds in the distance, and it didn't matter what the clouds were saying. Yes. And here I am again in Montessaja, and I am once again engulfed in my mind, like a leaf blown helplessly in the, in the night, to the right and to the left, in the wind of thoughts. Why you don't just observe this? It's a feeling, it's a sensation. You don't have to be a traffic policeman in your own mind. The thing is coming and going. Okay, maybe, maybe in the beginning, you have to be a bit vigilant. Maybe you have to sort of like just be aware that there are thoughts. And yes, but gradually it becomes effortless. Again, there is so much self-involvement again. So many judgments of myself, of others. So many feelings of being useless and outsider. All these things coming up, you see, because in some way they were dormant. There are many things that you move around in life, they are dormant. Then you fall in love or you meet someone who really reflects pure love to you and it all comes up, all your rubbish comes up. You think, oh, all your romance is going to come up, yeah, but then all your crap comes up. <laughs> you think, oh, no, no, I don't want this at all, no, 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 you know, it's very inconvenient, no? <laughs> but love, love offers you the space to evict your crap. Our thoughts, our nonsense comes up. This is also the action of love, the grace of the love also, of Truth. 
And on top of all of this, there is so much frustration that thoughts of once more conquered the land. They have not conquered anything at all. Thoughts of conquered the land is itself a thought. Nothing can conquer you, except you believe this thing, and you believe it into existence. Nothing actually, if you know what you are, nothing can conquer you. If you are ego, if you are the mind, yes, a lot of stuff can conquer you. But if you are consciousness itself, and why should you even doubt this? When you are the one that is watching the mind, the mind is not watching you. Mind has no life. Mind simply means thought. There is nothing called mind. There is something called brain that you can study, but mind simply means the flow of thought. Can anybody show a sample of mind? Mind itself means thought. On top of all of this, there is so much frustration. There is a for so there is so much frustration that thoughts have once again conquered the land that they are believed in again. By whom they believe in? The idea you have of yourself is believing. I said before, the idea we have of ourself is suffering from other ideas it has about itself. The idea you project about yourself is suffering from its projections also. It is as if I have fallen from grace, fallen out of grace's lap. <laughs> How can such things be true? How can such things be true? It's not true at all. Anyway, you say it is as if, uh, at least, there is some space in saying that. <laughs> it is as it seems as though. Yeah, it's a seeming. The whole of it is a seeming. How can you fall from grace? How can anything possess you? No such thing can happen. It can only happen to the idea we have of who we are, to a deluded identity, which is not the truth. It is not the truth. And I'm ringing a bell about it. Wake up from this. Wake up from this. This is not true. Nothing can conquer you. You are a self, you are consciousness. Dreaming that you are this thing that has really been taken and so believing in this identity itself. So I know why you come back to finish this off. <laughs> Isn't it? It must be to finish it off. Maybe you thought it was finished the first round. <laughs> you knocked him <laughs> and got on the plane with you back. <laughs> Did you, <help? laughs> you brought him here again and finish him off. Don't be kind to your mind. And my question is, why has this happened again? Nothing has happened. <laughs> Nothing really has happened. Everything we think happened. Much of our life, we are thinking our life and believing it into a kind of existence, giving it... When are we going to notice? Can this ever stop happening? Yes. How? <laughs> if I tell you how, you're not going to follow me. <laughs> you have to be here, be here, and all your how, 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 how will... <laughs> it will just somehow melt away. Can this ever stop happening? What you're referring to? Of just identifying with the mind and believing the thoughts. Of course. What am I here doing, telling you all this stuff? If it's not, if it's not possible, if it's not possible, call it a day. We all go home and suffer in our own little <laughs> private. <laughs> <laughs> but it feels huh? it felt so hopeless. Yes, yes, it feels hopeless, and we believe it is hopeless, and this continues to give energy to the egoic deluded mind. Can this ever stop? Of course it can uh, stop happening. Can I be free from my mind once and for all? Yes, you can. <laughs> but still there will be a quiet vigilance present in you. Not a scratchy, sweaty effort. Just the alertness of being will be there.
it was there and it was there all along but mm. it was so uncomfortable the thoughts were just so uncomfortable the and cause were uncomfortable for who you must follow and look for it you're just going on there's oh, so uncomfortable so uncomfortable but and then oh yes yes but and remembering oh yes i am not then i'm not no but find out for whom is it uncomfortable if you're quiet and find out who suffers the impact the discomfort of thought stop and look please see if you can find this one is it tangible can you catch him introduce it to me the one who is suffering the discomfort use the discomfort use the uncomfortable feelings to lead you to the one who suffers them if there is one to be found find it i'm waiting for 11 years now and i'm getting very impatient to find this one awareness is here in all of this but it seems like it's on the back burner this is also a projection an idea an image that one gives to awareness it's on the back burner it is on the back burner is an idea itself appearing in awareness like something weak in the background something too elusive this is just the mind playing why can the mind play because it's got your attention <laughs> your attention is the most powerful thing you have but i don't know if i have control over putting my attention elsewhere listen you are even earlier than attention because you are aware of attention who are you even before you start to bring your attention anywhere you are the one who witnesses to say the attention is jumping about or so who are you where are you looking from this is a very subtle thing but it's a truth it's a fact which means it's here now are you not here to speak about attention attention you speak about like a phenomenon like it is a sort of like some some kind of object my attention is jumping about and like this attention i can't control my attention no don't control it find who you are who watches unruly attention even mm. awareness is here in all of this but it seems like it's on the back burner like something weak in the background something too elusive it's just ideas all these being perceived in awareness itself which cannot which cannot have background or foreground because if ba- if awareness had a background it means it has proportion it's on the back burner why not the front burner oh there's no awareness on the front burner only in the back burner there's nonsense things awareness like space even where is there space not where is space not you can look all oh, this there's no space over there well it takes space to perceive over there the space is infinite and awareness is even more subtle than space because it can perceive space it's not space is perceiving awareness this is how the mind can beat you because now it causes even the ground of perception to appear as a phenomenon this is all muddled up thinking mm-hmm. you are looking to the mind but turn your attention to the self whoever you are and you will not see the mind there's a story about a man who was really did not like his shadow the man i don't doesn't like his shadow everywhere he goes he see the shadow he tries to get rid of it he fights it but it seems to move every i can't get to separate from the shadow he tries to jump and it seems to separate then comes back down in lands everywhere you could not get rid of his shadow so one day he was passing a cemetery and he saw some people burying a body and he had the idea ha great i'll bury my shadow mm-hmm. so then he goes and he stands in a place until he dig a big hole until he see the shadow in the hole he start to pour <laughs> earth on top but the shadow keep coming on top of the earth 
Jesus, oh my God. So one man was watching him and he tell him, what are you trying to do? So I'm trying to get rid of my shadow. I'm trying to bury, kill my shadow. So the man says, okay, wherever you see the sun, just look towards the sun. And you don't you forget about your shadow. Mm-hmm. Okay? We are spending time looking at the shadow of mine. Oh, the mind is like this, the mind does this, oh, my mind is so strong and I feel so weak. All of this is energizing this uh, egoic mind. And I says, look at that which sees the mind. What sees mind? Sometimes our, our minds cannot catch hold of it. It feels like, oh, that's a kind of strange question. It's kind of freaking my head out. You are watching everything. But not you personally, not your personally doing it. From consciousness, everything is seen. <coughs> it's just like a fever that's come over you for a bit, and it seems like this for the moment because you've just come back again, also, and so all these things are stirred up, and the mind says, "Ha ha ha! You were here before. You really screwed up. You come here, and you're even more screwed up." <laughs> and you are just such a customer for these type of thoughts. <laughs> It's nothing. It's nothing, 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 nothing. Nothing. <laughs> it's nothing. Everybody's suffering from nothing. What you believe it to be. Nothing exists in the world with one fixed meaning. Nothing that you can perceive exists with a fixed meaning. It will mean different things to different people. Look and see if you can confirm this or not. Nothing that you can see exists as an absolute. Therefore, why give so much attention to what is even yourself also looking at the same thing at different times feel differently about it? But it's not me giving attention. It's attention is given. If attention is given to it, then something is aware of the giving of attention. Put some attention on that. Be aware of that. One thing I tell you, when the attempt arises to give attention to that, a lot of resistance come. A lot of resistance come, because somehow it is like there is a force inside us that is trying to block you from discovering the Truth. When you discover the Truth, game up. There is a force inside that doesn't want. And we sponsor this force. We are in a partnership with this force, because somehow we also believe that if we see things too clearly, the game is up, and we still have some investment in the game. But I want to tell you that the game of manifestation, manifestation and perception continues. Because nothing, it was not about this. Nothing is wrong with this. <coughs> this is the living painting of the Supreme. Nothing including is wrong the with thoughts. Including the thoughts. <laughs> including the thinker. You have a role to play that it's not that you are a victim of thought. If you are a victim of thought, or we are victims of thought, then what's the point of talking about this? There's nothing you can do about it. If you're a victim of thought, if there was a rule by the Supreme, you shall be a victim of thought, (laughs) then what are we here doing? Just deluding ourselves. Because there's nothing you can do. A thought says, this person is not nice, and suddenly you start, kill him. Yeah, poof. You are a victim of thought. There could be no court. Why did you kill this person? I could do nothing about it. The thought said, do it. 
if we're a victim of thought. You're not a victim of thought. You have a power to observe the thoughts and their pull. But to recognize that it is merely a thought and who are you who watch this thing? That's why the game is so exquisite. Because Mahima is leaving now. See you in two. She's coming. You're not a victim of thought. You have the power. This is why the game is so exquisite, because you have the power to transcend this thought play. And that itself is the proof of the majesty of being. You have the power. For a while we are a little bit in a state of hypnosis, so we are not quite sure if we have power or not. And through satsang you are becoming more aware, but wait a minute, but this is not true. And as much as we keep on recognizing what is not true, you come to a greater state of awakening. It seems for a while is as though the egoic mind, the mind of the past, seems to function to try and keep your attention on the past and upon your physical existence to feel insecure. Because then you can stay in a state of delusion. As soon as you wake up to this truth, you are free of it. Game over. It is like that. Can we do that right now then? What? Because there's a lot of thoughts. There's a lot of thoughts now. Okay. What's new about them? Nothing, but I want to go to the one that sees them. You just said there's a lot of thoughts. Is there already evidence that you see them? You are seeing them. What are they doing to you? The thought, any thought can come, even in the mind of a sage. Any thought can come. A thought can come and says, I want your right kidney. Does it mean all? Oh, okay, take it. Anything it can come. Any thought can come. That's not the trouble. But something purchases this thought. And that which purchases the thought is an idea you have of who you are. Purchase the thought. But still, there's a seeing there that watch that happened, isn't it? So just be the seeing. Keep on being the seeing only. Not what happened in the seeing, but just the seeing. How are you bound? Show me now. How are you bound? What is any problem for you? Be honest. If there is, tell me. I, I'm not uh, wanting to hear a success story. Just tell me the truth. What is your experience? <laughs> right now, pay attention to right now. What is your experience? Share with me. If you say the thoughts are so strong, they're completely dominating my head, then say this. There's a lot going on at the same time. Yes, uh, in terms of thought activity. Also. Yeah. And also the one that watches. Don't even say the one that watches, just that the watching of them is there. Supposing there's a tsunami of thought activity. <laughs> hmm? And you don't identify, you simply allow it to be seen. And you report, actually, 
is a tsunami of thought activity. Okay. Right. Are you dying? Are you dying? Are you a victim? If you simply observe this, Let's do it another way. Let's say, listen, you know what? Whatever happened, don't let that tsunami go away. Let the tsunami stay there. Okay? With the same intensity. Just make sure it stays at the same intensity. Let it completely disturb you. So, <laughs> I want to see you very disturbed. Go on. <laughs> and when you have succeeded, just, just give me an indication that I am very disturbed right now. feedback like I'm I'm going with it in my head yeah like all the go with it yeah go with it like to vocalize it yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm like swearing and just like fuck this <laughs> that's what the thoughts are saying <laughs> <laughs> but but it's at the same time it's I don't think it's so bad. If the thoughts are, ah, fuck this, wow. <laughs> so what? We have heard it before. <laughs> oh no, my thoughts should not behave like that. <laughs> But can it not just happen like that? Is as I said before, it's not what the thought <coughs> or what the mind thinks or says or behave. Is that you invest so much importance to that, and that is a difference that will come. Because the greatest victory, perhaps, over the mind, is when its projections become insignificant for you. Because it seems like it is always auditioning for your attention. Uh, it gets no attention. Because if it gets no attention, guess what? It just vanish. What kind of room have you offered your mind? Your mind has gone to Las Vegas. <laughs> it can be like this. And the next minute it can be nothing at all. It's nothing at all. If you identify with that, believe in this, and oh, oh you know, this is going on, say, stop it. Sometimes I've said to people, stop it. And oh, <laughs> what happened? It stopped. <laughs> is it possible? I am telling you, it is nothing except what you make it to be. This kind of mind that you are speaking about cannot intimidate pure consciousness. It can only intimidate deluded consciousness. When consciousness identifies itself as mere body-mind, and thinks itself to be a person, then it can somehow attack it. So when I say, let me see your mind, show me, show me, I want to see it in all its technicolor hmm, perverseness. What words you would use, what things you might say, 
No big deal. Is that it? thing it has to be personal unless the mind is personal it will attack you because you become personal when you're personal things like you're not good enough Whoa. that has a weight to it you see the way they look at you they excluded you you're not good enough <laughs> You're never going to get it. You've done too many wrong things in your life. These are the kind of things that the egoic mind <laughs> suffers from. So you have come back very well. It's time to put that to an end. You would like the tablet, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sell some pills, okay. <laughs> Take two of these. It's fine. Not because the truth is going to be hot in a few days, but something here has to somehow adjust. I don't know what it is. It's not enough that you say, No, I want it now. I want it now. You who? You who want it even. Again, it's the mind. And you know what? The mind doesn't want it now. He's just trying to call my bluff. I want it now. Deliver it now. Okay, here it is. No, that's not it. That's not it. <laughs> I know that game. If you want it now, stay here now. Keep staying here now. And now you'll get it. You'll see it. Because I show you, and somehow I don't find it dropping in. It's not dropping in. I know when it drops in. Sometimes we used to remember when I, uh, sometimes late in the night in London, you know, and you want a Coca Cola or something, <coughs> and the shops are closed, and only the machines are there, and you go out with your 50p, and you put it in, and you go. It's not accepting. It's dropped in. Press Coca Cola, boom, come out. Real thing. And same thing. Sometimes you're being, the advice is coming, but you're not clicking, it's not coming in. Something is still holding back an hesitation, something. You may say with words, no, but I'm ready, that's all I want. And so I said, no. No. You're not available. It will be known when you are available. Sometimes it's only rebelliousness that speaks.
something stronger than the egoic mind must have brought you here. Something stronger than the egoic mind must bring you here. Because the ego mind does not want to come. Or it might say, I want to come, but quickly it would make an escape. As soon as one somehow feels an urge for truth, some war begins inside. It's almost like a struggle is there to try and sit on the throne of your heart, something. Either the mind or the being. But the beingness doesn't know how to fight. It does not need to fight, because it does not recognize any other to fight. Only the mind is fighting. And its weapons are delusion, division, fragmentation, doubt, insecurity, all these things. Soon you will transcend them.